Godwin, you beast. Get up. Do you hear me? Wake up, you drunkards. Oh, fuck it out. Oh, oh, where the... Oh, what the... Oh, who the hell are you? Oh, Henry. My great friend, Henry. Didn't we have a wonderful time? Well, you oh. certainly did, you old lecher. Now you better pull yourself together quick. You haven't much time. There's some water and something to eat on the table there, but if I were you, I would move my hairy arse before my flock eats me alive. Oh, Christé Bonnie, my head. Oh, my guts. Oh, my poor suffering stomach. Oh, what was that woman on about? Before my flock eats me alive, I've forgotten something. What have I forgotten? Where the fuck am I? What the fuck was it? Oh. Mass! Oh shit, I have to say mass. I gotta say mass. You have to help me. Ow! You're the priest. I can't do it in this state. Maybe the liturgy. But I have to give a sermon as well. Oh, this is a disaster. They're gonna excommunicate me. I'd like to help you, but you can. You can do the sermon for me. What? So, first I investigate a murder no one wants investigated. <sighs> then I drunkenly keep the whole town up all night. And now you want me to preach at them from the pulpit? Do you want them to burn us at the stake? No. No, I've got it. Suppose it's Sir Ratzig's protege. You just came from studying in Prague. And you want to share the words of Master Jan Hus, who you recently heard preaching there. Henry, look, from what I remember, we might have overdone it a bit last night. And if the bailiff or someone else complains about me, the bishop's going to have my guts for garters. So I'd appreciate it. Stop gaping at me like a stuffed squirrel and start helping. You're mad. You're start raving mad. I'm not. It's a perfect plan. It's flawless. <coughs> oh. How about this? If you help me with this. I'll tell you who Lubosh's cronies are. So all at once the confessional seal isn't so sacred? Uh, don't mock me. I won't give you a second chance. Well, all right. But I can't make any promises about what will happen. No, neither can I. What do you want me to do, exactly? I'll go and start the liturgy. Then I'll introduce you. You give the sermon I told you yesterday in the tavern, and that's that. No need to drag it out. If it turns out well, I'll tell you what I know about Lubos. Christ almighty. Fine, then. We have a deal. Wonderful. Let's get to it, then.
never show up. The swill pup. Look at him. He can hardly walk after his capers last night. You were with them, you beast. Just you wait. Look at him. Mother of God. Any minute now, he'd throw up. Animals. I couldn't sleep a wink last night with all that clamor. In nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Accepit panem in sanctas at venerabiles amanus suas. <clears throat> Hoc facite in meam commemorationem. Brothers and sisters, you may have had the honor of meeting Henry from Scalitz, who is here at the behest of Sir Hanush to investigate that heinous crime at Neuha. You might not know that Henry recently visited Prague, where, by the grace of God, was able to hear Master Jan Hus from the esteemed Charles University preaching. I've managed to persuade Henry to stand here today in my stead and tell us what he heard. Because, as you all probably know, Jan Hus is a very popular preacher in Prague. So, Henry, you may begin. Now I'm curious. Curious which one of them will puke first. Uh, greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. I am here to tell you about Mother Church and to show you through my words how she is falling into decay and abandon, how the once great mother of all Christians is losing her dignity and trading in souls like the merchants in the temple. Uh, but I am digressing. Boy is a cheek. One should not believe in the church, because the church is not God. God is above all things, and the church is but a means to salvation, which the prelates do not care to hear. He's right. It is the corruption of God's pastors here on earth that has brought misfortune on our heads. Plague, enemies, injustice... Hunger and chaos, failed harvests, fires, floods, and other catastrophes. The accursed wealth that the church is drowning in is poisoning almost the whole of Christendom. When dogs are fighting over a bone, take the bone and they will stop. Just like the flock of ravens that has descended on this land to peck up every speck of gold and silver. They show no mercy. Their hearts are poisoned by covetousness. They trade... Everything, everything is for sale. You want to baptize a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay, and you will have absolution. And the prelates sin and give themselves absolution. For shame, shame upon them. It is the custom of the gluttonous prelates and monks to preach against sin. But what do they know of us ordinary folk? Let us remember the marriage at Cana, where our Lord Jesus Christ himself feasted with the other guests and drank his fill. And when the wine was gone, he performed a miracle and created more. He, whose companions were poor travellers, simple folk, prostitutes and troublemakers, performed a miracle so the feast could continue. Now that's the kind of sermon I like to hear. No, brothers and sisters. Jesus did not condemn alcohol. Drink to lighten the cross you bear in this veil of tears, but not with such abandon that you cannot keep holy the Sabbath. 
For there should be moderation in all things, and it is not drinking itself that is sinful, but intemperance and beastly indulgence. He's right. Enough about sin, which the prelates are so fond of preaching about, and whose absolution they promise if you pay enough coin to Mother Church. What if the devil himself were to pay? Will the bishops tell us he too would ascend to heaven? And what about those bishops? They sin without remorse, and with the money grasped from the poor for indulgences, they keep fine horses and hordes of servants to pamper them. They play dice and garb their mistresses in expensive furs, while Christ, the Lamb of God, walked barefoot and had nowhere to lay his head. Look to your consciences, you robbers of the poor, for you are seen by God and his people too. Down with the prelates. Away with them. We're fortunate to have our good father Godwin. At least he's a fair and simple man. God sees what is happening on earth, and he is filled with righteous wrath that those who should seek the salvation of souls instead seek mammon and the idle comfort of lucrative posts. Blessed are the shepherds who share the poverty of their flock, who are as one with you and bear with you the burden of this earthly pilgrimage, who do not condemn your venial sins. Oi! All honour to Godwin! Let him drink like one of us! That is all I heard in Prague. Amen. The lad spoke well, considering what a soak he is. He's right, that was. The young man shouldn't drink so much, but the Lord's given him a silver tongue. I don't suppose I'll ever get to Prague. He told it nicely. Well, well, my boy, you have talent, and I can't deny it. And you pulled a thorn from my side. I almost didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. And I wasn't the only one. Oh, what's to be done? I'll make it up somehow. So, about our bargain. Although it's a sin. Uh, so it's gluttony and fornication. God does forgive a penitent. So, what did Limpy Lubosch tell you? Was he at Neuhof that day? Who was with him? And, and, and where are they now? Now slow down. I'm sorry, but he didn't tell me that much. Don't let me down after all I've been through. For you? Well, now Lubosch came to me shortly after it happened. And his conscience was gnawing at him. And I must say... Uh, in the end, he turned out to be a better man than he looked. He said they'd been hired through some crony of theirs. And at first, they were just to steal some horses. But then it all turned sour and people started getting killed. And neither he nor his cronies wanted anything to do with that. So they fell out from the gang and fled. Fell out? Yeah, there was a body found in the woods by Neuhoff. Um, that would explain something. Uh, Lubos kept jabbering that he wasn't a murderer, that he didn't want to do it. So I know that Lubos killed the murderer and he's dead too. The trouble is, I need to find the ones who are still alive. I need names and places. Did he mention any of the others? Uh, only nicknames. Uh, he talked about some fella called Riki from Ledechko, Pius, Timmy. Pius. <laughs> That lot are about as pious as I am ordained. Nonsense. You would make an excellent priest. And anyhow, with your skills, you ought to be able to sniff out this Riki from Ledechko, right? <laughs> well, we'll have to now. There's not much else to go on. Let's hope he's not hanging from the wall, too. <sighs> Indeed. And I'd hate to be excommunicated for nothing. Anyhow, good luck. You watch out for yourself. These people clearly mean business. And I'd like to raise a tankard with you again sometime. Yeah, I'll try. Although I'm not sure I'd survive another night of your debauchery. And if anyone should ask, you heard nothing from me. I'll deny everything. <laughs> I don't doubt it.